Painting white pets in watercolor can seem so daunting. How in fact do you make a white animal look realistic when you're already painting on a white piece of paper? Welcome back friends, my name is Emily and my goal is to offer watercolor tips and tricks that will help you grow as an artist and create paintings that you love. So, white fur. I have some tips for you today. Let's take a look at this reference photo. So I purchased this photo from a stock photo site of a majestic white Persian cat luxuriating in a festively lit space. And the first thing you'll notice is that there is actually a lot of color in the cat's fur. That's because white fur rarely appears pure white. It tends to reflect all the colors that are around it. So in this image, there appears to be a cool or more of a blue light source on the cat's face. And along the back of the cat's head, we see a really warm yellow light hitting the fur. Now just a little bit of observation will help you as you begin painting any white animal. Just ask yourself what colors you see. Do you see more blue, more red, more yellow? Every reference photo will be different, especially if it's an indoor photo or an outdoor photo it changes the lighting so much on a white animal. So if you're wanting to paint a photo of your own cat or dog, let your careful observation of that image dictate your color choices. You will almost always require some version of the primary colors no matter what photo you're painting from. Here are my top five tips for painting white animals. Start with the eyes. Doing the eyes and the nose first can help you get a quick win, something on the paper that looks detailed and realistic. It helps set the tone for the painting and it also can get you really excited just to keep going. Since the eyes represent the darkest value on a white cat, this also helps to serve as a guidepost against which you can compare all of your subsequent layers of paint. One mistake many beginners make is that they're afraid to go dark enough with their values. Putting those blacks in from the start really just helps you make better judgments about how dark you actually need to go with the white fur around those eyes. My second tip is to use a combination of warm and cool colors, preferably a limited palette. Don't just stick with gray or light blue. Remember that white fur reflects all the colors around it. You can do some test swatches to see which colors from your palette match the closest. And I definitely recommend watering down your swatches so that you can see what just a light tint looks like on the paper. Since you're painting a white animal, you won't be using any of your colors in full force. For this cat painting, I tried to keep my palette pretty simple. I I chose Naples yellow for my warm yellow and a combination of ultramarine blue and phthalo blue for the cool colors in the fur. I dropped in hints of burnt sienna and yellow ochre here and there and some tinted washes of indigo just to add some complexity to those color temperatures within the fur. My third tip is to paint some background color. Sometimes this can really help the white stand out. In the same way that you would paint the eyes so that you can make better value judgments, painting your background surrounding your white subject can really help the white areas just stand out so much more. So for my background, I started by masking out the white lights so that I could freely paint over the top with my Naples yellow and phthalo blue. I used the wet and wet technique to help create super soft edges where the background color meets the white cat fur. For more about the importance of edges, check out this video. Really quick, if you want to look over my shoulder and paint right along with me. Good news, this white cat tutorial is available in real time. Head over to emilyolsonart.com where you can join my watercolor mastery membership. Included with the membership are over 150 fully narrated tutorials like this one, which all include a downloadable reference photo, a traceable line drawing, and a complete list of supplies used in each project. The membership also includes the 30 days to watercolor course, which is just for beginners, portrait instruction, fur texture, and skin tone workshops, and I'm constantly adding new tutorials. In fact, every single week you'll see something new. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. Let's get back to the video. My fourth tip for painting white animals is to use very watery tinted washes. Be conservative. This is probably the most important tip for painting white animals. Don't go too dark too soon. A common problem beginners have with painting white animals is that they just fail to water down the paint quite enough and their washes look way too dark. So we wanna work our way up to the final result very gradually, one light tinted wash at a time. Again, test it out on a sheet of paper first if you're not confident with your value adjustments. My last tip, and this is actually for pretty much any animal in any color, is to use a combination of wet and wet and wet and dry. When painting almost anything, I like to start with wet and wet for the softest blend of colors at the beginning. I generously wet the paper first and then I brush in the big blocks of color like the yellow back of the head and the blue tones in the face. The pigment disperses so beautifully with this technique and allows for just seamless blending. It's also a great way to ensure that you don't paint too dark in those first washes since wet and wet will naturally look lighter. After doing some wet and wet washes using conservative tints of color, once you feel ready and you've let it dry all the way, you can do some wet and dry details. Your wet and dry details should be saved until the very end. 
This is where you can add things like whisker pads and whiskers, individually painted on hairs, and shadows between sections of fur. I find that a combination of wet and wet and wet on dry produces a soft but beautifully detailed result. Thank you so much to the viewer who requested a Persian cat tutorial. Leave me a like and a comment if you found this video helpful and check out this other video about how to start a pet portrait.